Hi, welcome to the 25th anniversary International Festival of Arts and Ideas virtual stage. We are pleased to collaborate with the Yale China Association to present this seminar featuring the 2020 Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office New York Arts uh, Trade Office New York Arts Activator Chi Yung Wong. I'm Melissa Huber, I'm the festival's producer, and I'll start with a recognition that the International Festival of Arts and Ideas is created and produced on the traditional lands of the Mohegan, Mashantucket Pequot, Eastern Pequot, Scaticoke, Golden Hill Pagasset, Niantic, and the Quinnipiac in the land we call home, Connecticut. We hope that from wherever you are, you take a moment to acknowledge and honor the native people whose lands that you are on and the history of the place that you are in. Find out more about Native Land Near You, uh, HTTP native land, native dot, uh, dash land dot CA. Since 2015, the festival has partnered with Yale China Association to create deep cultural exchanges between arts activators and arts fellows and the greater New Haven community. We look forward each year to meeting the new fellows, learning about their work, providing connections to the field and Greater New Haven, and during the festival, presenting this public facing program to share a, sh a snapshot of each fellow's work while here in New Haven. With that, it's my great pleasure to introduce Vice President and Director of Programs at Yale China Association, Leslie Stone. I am delighted to, thank you, Missy. I'm so delighted to represent the Yale China Association in welcoming you all to this seminar by Chi Yong Wang, one of our 2020 Hong Kong Economic and Trade Officer Arts Activators. His seminar title is Exploring the Arts Sciences Collaboration. Yale China bridges American and Chinese cultures by creating lasting transformative partnerships and experiences in education, health, and the arts. It is honored to collaborate with the International Festival of Arts and Ideas on the Yale China Arts and Arts Activator Fellowships. We are especially grateful to Missy Huber, Bobby Asher, and Tiffany Hopkins for their partnership, guidance, and support. We are also deeply grateful for the sponsorship and partnership of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office of New York, especially director Joanne Chu. Our partnership with the Yale School of Drama is also instrumental. The program brings cutting edge artists and arts administrators from Hong Kong to New Haven for six months of exploration and creation at Yale and New Haven. The fellows build on connections they make in New Haven far beyond their residency. Today, Chi Yong Seminar brings together participants from New Haven and Hong Kong, linking the two places in real time. I am now pleased to hand over this presentation to Yale China Program Officer for Education and the Arts, Emily Chu, who will introduce Chi Yong Wang and be the moderator for the seminar. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. I'm so excited to be here introducing Chi Yong. Um, as Leslie and Missy have said, Chi Yong is our, one of our 2020 HKETO NY Arts Activators. Chi Yong is a cross disciplinary artist curator whose work covers experiential installation, light installation, creative education, and cultural exchange between the arts and sciences. His work in light installation has led to creation of exhibits that utilize his work in creating collaborations between the arts and sciences. And as this work has continued, Xiong has become a bridge between the arts and sciences, fostering communication and collaboration between artists and science. It's been really exciting to watch him bring that collaboration and work to New Haven and Yale. And we are very excited to see what he's going to show us today. He has been able to make many partnerships in New Haven despite the impact of COVID-19. And today he'll be sharing some of what he's learned. Before I hand it off to Chi Yong, I want to remind everyone that comments and questions are encouraged and we'll be trying to answer as many questions after the talk if we have time. Thank you. And I'm gonna hand it off to Chi Yong. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Chiyong Wong. Um, I am an installation artist. Um, let me start sharing some of the visuals. Uh, so yes, I'm an installation artist. Um, I'm also an artist curator. Uh, I've seen many years of development experience. I start to 
not only creating installations, try to create exchange and bridges between arts and science and education. So on uh, my background, originally 20 years ago, I studied theater lighting. So I also do theater lighting and architectural lighting. So that's why you see my work uh, has a huge influence on uh, uh, theater work or installation work and also somehow architectural. So my, my role in the arts, uh, Yale China Fellowship Program is an art activator and try to uh, execute and, and inspire or create a different kind of project to inspire dialogue um, between education and my research. So uh, during the Yale China Fellowship Program, I spent six months in New Haven uh, with the Yale community, uh, trying to learn and exchange and collaborate with the expert and the student, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's been very exciting for the last six months. Um, uh, I bring my art science collaboration subject to New Haven, which is the tutor, today our some seminar topic that I would like to share with you, like what is art science collaboration and what is mindfulness and how we can try to use our, our art and aesthetic experience to explore therapeutic effect with scientists and, and what would be the benefit and how to line up our collaboration for the future to bring our discipline and our research closer together between science and and artistic practice. So uh, with um, so if you are interested about my work and learn more about my uh, my, my my background, so you are feel free to go to my website later to check out what I work. Uh, then you will have a strong understanding how do I come into this journey. So now we uh, I go to my slide. Yes. So, by the way, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Yale China. Thank you, Festival of um, uh, Yale and the festival, like organizing this. This is very exciting for me. And uh, so, uh, in this uh, fellowship, what I'm interested in bringing to Yale is to try to uh, explore what is our awesome collaboration in Yale. So, I meet different kind of scientists and 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 and, and artists and educators to see how do they explore this subject and also how scientists uh, research on mindfulness or how artists research on mindfulness in Yale. But before I have this, I bring in the subject to, which is a three year work that I've been working with scientists in Europe, uh, into Yale. So uh, today with this seminar, I give you an idea how do I try to bring this subject and, and strategy to work with scientists from Europe and Hong Kong bring to Yale. And, and at the end, by the end of this presentation that Emily and I will exchange a little bit like by the end of this residency with Yale, like what sort of new input that I get from uh, Yale China and also from Yale and what would, it, what would be the future for my project. So, we will have uh, about this presentation, we will talk about the exploring art science collaborations on mindfulness and experiential installation. So we'll get into a deeper, deeper understanding all this terminology, like what, what's it about? So, um, <clears throat> so you can look at this kind of presentation and workshop It's like a workshop or a seminar, we exchange idea. Uh, it's an open format uh, that we can ask questions about this kind of subject and I will use this also as a case study, uh, this experiential installation, uh, which is informed by the mindfulness practice and is related scientific research, uh, collaborating with neuroscientists and psychiatrists and to open up more and more questions. So this is the overview of what I have done uh, with this subject uh, in the last three years exploring our science collaboration. They included uh, developing a workshop and exchange program with scientists through an artist in that residency program in Zurich. So as an artist, like how, how I can try to work out a bridge and a programming or a, a, a model or exchange with scientists. So this is the first project. The second project that I've done is curating a forum as a scientist, uh, as, a, as an artist, how to curate a forum on uh, cost disciplinary exchange to make visible to the public like this kind of knowledge. I call it hidden knowledge because a lot of time when we exchange with scientists or artists, a lot of time it's not finishing work, so, but there are a lot of knowledge being created. So using a platform as a for, uh, of a forum, it can make it visible and open new window for a lot of people interested in this subject uh, for the art science community. And the last project is I try to wear the hat of an artist to go back to this last stop of my venture is to create a final installation, which is the uh, experiential installation inspired by this mindfulness research um, as an artistic research, also in the same time uh, related to a lot of scientific research. The installation was being built in Belgium uh, in 
Liège, Belgium. So you can see I traveling between Hong Kong, Switzerland, and Belgium to in order to facilitate this kind of um I call that international exchange, cost disciplinary exchange. And at the end, now I come to the state to try to work with experts and scientists and educators in Yale and try to get new input how the American side um, look into this subject. So after this presentation, we can use this project as a case study. Uh, we can explore and discuss about the potential of ASAN collaboration with you guys. For example, in this kind of collaboration, what would be the challenges, what would be the benefits, and what would be the possible directions? And how does it relate it to your discipline or professional practice? Let's say if you're an artist, if you, would you like to work with engineer? Uh, if you're an engineer, would you like to work with um, an artist or architect? So when working in a transdisciplinary setting, what does it take? So, and also have you thought about in the future, like to create a project which is based on these transdisciplinary collaborations? So before we go further, so introducing, uh, dive into each of the projects. So uh, we let's talk about what is mindfulness. So I think in mindfulness, uh, everyone knows that about a little bit in, in the state is very used, uh, very common now. But I started researching mindfulness about eight years ago when it was not so common. And uh, also depending on where you are in the world, mindfulness practice or the research in mindfulness is very, very different. And people know about mindfulness in a very different level. In the state, it's very well informed, I would say. But in Hong Kong and in Europe, they are very, very different. Hong Kong, it begins to talk about mindfulness, but it doesn't mind it doesn't mean mindfulness doesn't exist. Uh, mindfulness is also very, um, uh, because of an, a his, history of a meditation practice in uh, Asian culture. So mindfulness is also part of the culture. But in Europe, uh, recently, uh, in the last few years, they start to research more. So, but let's go through about some definition, general definition, what mindfulness is. So mindfulness, uh, in general, is a psychological process that we all have similar to patients, is a built-in capability in our mind. So remember, this mindfulness is not something I give it to you or something that you learn, but it's something that you already have. It's really similar to patients. Uh, but everyone has patience, but how well you exercise or how well you practice your patience is different things because in your whole human experience or in your mind, you have patience, you have mindfulness, but by practicing more, you become better and better. But remember, this is a capability we already have, but by practicing more, we become better at it. So mindfulness is the ability, in general, we call that you are able to pay attention to the present moment and to observe calmly our own feeling, thought, and the changes in our body without any judgment. So this is a very general definition of mindfulness practice. By, by practicing mindfulness, we can gain better awareness on our own experience and so that we can, we can understand how our emotion come and how our emotion goes so that we are not so easy being hijacked by our, our emotions. So, um, I will introduce, I will show you a little bit uh, of, a, I'll show you a short video so we get into a little bit more understanding more about mindfulness. So now we go for the video. You may have heard this word mindfulness. It's become something of a buzz phrase of late. So I'm going to give you one simple serviceable definition, which is this. Mindfulness is the ability to know what's happening in your head at any given moment without getting carried away by it. Imagine how useful this could be. Just as an example, you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off in traffic. How do you normally react? I think most of us, we normally react by having a thought, which is, I'm pissed. And then what happens next? You immediately, habitually, reflexively inhabit that thought. You actually become pissed. There's no buffer between the stimulus and your reaction with just a little bit of mindfulness, in that same situation, you might notice my chest is buzzing, my ears are turning red, I'm having a starburst of self-righteous thoughts, I'm getting angry. But you don't necessarily have to act on it and chase that person down the road, screaming at them with your kids in the back of the car thinking you've gone nuts. Now, you might be thinking, don't I need to get angry sometimes? Aren't I justified? I would say yes, but probably not as much as you think. The proposition here is not that you should be rendered by mindfulness into some lifeless, non-judgmental blob. 
The proposition is that you should learn how to respond wisely to things that happen to you rather than just reacting blindly. And that, my friends, is a superpower. How do you get it? The way to get it is through meditation. I believe that meditation and mindfulness are the next big public health revolution. In the 1940s, if you told somebody you were going running, they would have said, who's chasing you? But then what happened next? The scientists swooped in, they showed that physical exercise is really good for you, and now all of us do it, and if we don't, we feel guilty about it. And that's where I think we're headed with mindfulness and meditation. It's gonna join the pantheon of no-brainers like brushing your teeth, eating well, and taking the meds your doctor prescribed for you. Let me just close by saying, Mindfulness is not going to solve all of your problems. It's not going to render your life a nonstop parade of unicorns and rainbows. Nonetheless, this is a superpower and one that is accessible by you immediately. And let's say a bit more about mindfulness. So mindfulness can get uh, really interesting and really, really useful. But the principle is very simple, that we are being aware and being mindful of what is happening now. And the next level is we can understand why we process our feeling, why we feel ourselves the way that we feel and because of what we do or what we don't. And try to understand from a sort of like a third person perspective and then by understanding more, then we can see the whole picture of our life. So this is, this is in general what we call the, the, the useful part of our mindfulness. So now we go back to my project, like how, how I'm interested in mindfulness bringing to my project and all the way go to Europe and Hong Kong and all the way come to uh, Yale and New Haven. So, so in my recent years, about eight years ago, um, I start to reflect uh, more about my artistic practice because I start to uh, more familiar with my with my experience, with my skill, and with my practice. So, and also in the same time, I wear different hats and taking different roles, not as an artist, also as an educator, as a collaborator. And then also in the same time, I explore different kind of collaborative arts form. And then I start to begin more and more interested in education. And then a lot of experience tell me if, to see if I can use artistic or cultural work to raise mental health awareness. And if you want to know more about my work, you can go to my website. You will see like I, I, I cover my work in uh, installation um, and also in theater and education. So this is the reason why I start to like reflect and merge all my experience into this question. And the question is how we can use theater or installation arts as an intervention for improving mental health. Can artists and scientists orbit around the subject of mental health and create collaborative research? And this is what made me curious and come to this transdisciplinary venture in the last few years about mindfulness, exploring with scientists about mindfulness, which is mostly because that I was trying to reflect like all this kind of collaboration with different people and different kind of art form that I explore. Then I come to these questions. And then I all the way uh, uh, use my experience and propose a project and all the way go to Switzerland to try to work with scientists. But at the beginning, the beginning is I start to have this concept uh, to explore uh, transdisciplinary collaboration to create a new project and to try to try to find a reciprocating way to work with neuroscientists and psychiatrists. Not only about creating artwork, it's about creating a change with scientists. I try to learn what they learn and what they see from the same subject. But at the same time, I would like to share with them like how contemporary artists research on the same subject, which is mental health and mental health awareness. But the very beginning, the scientists already asked me why and how. That's very straightforward. Then I realized that I have a concept, it's great, but I need strategy, I need planning, I need uh, implementation. But how does it work? But the problem is there's no existing platform for artists or scientists to collaborate. So whatever happening in art science collaboration, a lot of time it exists in an independent level or one-off level. 
So we don't have an institutionalized platform for artists and scientists work. We rarely see uh, artists and scientists work together in a university. But a lot of time it exists because uh, an artist or an educator, they have this self-driven program. But I realized that, oh, these are the things that we can explore how we can become a standard platform. So I try to use my project as a, as a prototype to, to explore the collaboration and turn into educational programming in the future. But by doing that, I need to experience myself. So when the, uh, uh, when the Sandy asked me how and why, then I give them the answer very straightforward. Yes, it's very simple because you guys are researching and I'm researching is to facil facilitate exchange between discipline, my discipline as an artist or art discipline and your discipline as a scientist. So sharing our research and our view to relate to mindfulness as a common goal. So more importantly, after this knowledge exchange in behind the door during our research, we can explore what is, is it possible to, to, to found a non-drug intervention as a resource for um, stress reductions or, or use an aesthetic experience um, to help people with mental health uh, needs. So I then proposed to them in our collaboration, we can hypothesize the idea that using an experiential installation that could enhance the mindfulness practice because now mindfulness practice is based on you read a lot of documents or you, you read a lot of training guidelines or you go to uh, instructors, then you start to practice practice. But we don't really have much of um, a lot of additional resources for mindfulness practice. And I hypothesize maybe experiential installation or aesthetic experience could enhance mindfulness practice along with this instructor. So then later, this become our core of our directions and subject for our discussion because the scientists have something to evaluate on, to discuss, to, to see if they could uh, turn this into a scientific project and to explore how to use ex uh, aesthetic experience to enhance mindfulness to reduce stress. So later, when the concepts start to evolve and we agree to work with, and then we start to have a more solid approach. And I propose to them in our collaborations, we can begin from learning each other practices, then we know what we do, and we compare our research on the mechani of mechanism of stress and mindfulness. So in order to collaborate, it's very important that we know each other. We become familiar, uh, each other practice our aim and objective. And as a result, we can begin to set up a workshop in which we introduce what we do, such as the new scientists, I invite them to introduce what they do in new imaging and how they research on the mechanism of stress and how do they see uh, experiential installations. And I invite a psychiatrist to introduce how they apply mindfulness training as one of our cognitive therapy, but also in the same time that they also introduce to the new scientists. New scientists research in a different way, but psychiatrists focus on more practical way, like practice, like resources for their patient or people in need. So I create this kind of platform for us to create dialogue between our research, our practice, and our discipline. And of course, my role as an artist, I introduce to both of them in the same time uh, how I try to create an experiential installation and aiming at enhancing mindfulness and try to use aesthetic experience to create contemplative space. And But the problem is um, I am not a scientist. I cannot quantify uh, my results uh, if my experiential installation could have any therapeutic effect. So that's why where's inviting uh, neuroscientists and psychiatrists become very helpful in this kind of collaborative setting, collaborative setting because we can help each other to quantify or to so-called prove or found a way to make this kind of collaborative research become possible. And at the end, we can contribute back to the mental health awareness or mental health resources. So, but at this Project, you can look at this. I went, I recognized my project as a prototype of an art science collaboration at the beginning. So by inventing the idea and executing the approach so that I can understand the full potentials, the actual challenge as an artist, and what would be um, useful for education and for art. So 
by inventing and executing this idea, I can create a model of art science program in the future for education, maybe for art, maybe for science, or maybe for art science. So to enhance what I see is lacking in our educational um, programming now in our school, which is we focus on a lot of training uh, artists to become a good artist, but um, how to train our artists or students to be good at communicating and working with other people and also train our scientists to try to find uh, alternative resources and alternative methods from art or from design to find more solutions for the world's problem. So this is what I think is interesting for me is I experimenting a collaboration, inventing the idea, bring back bring, bring this idea and concept and strategy to the scientists, to the psychiatrists, and ask them how do they think about it. And they give me advice and their expertise. And then more that we do that, our, our prototype become more solid and more solid. And then we use that to present to educators and policymakers. So as I mentioned before, they, uh, the project that now we get into each of them. So as I mentioned before, they include in developing a workshop uh, exchange program with the scientists and curating a workshop and then finally creating a final installation. So you see a different step of my journey. So now we dive into each of them and how I explore my hat and my role and dialogue with different people. So the first one is, um, it was developing the workshop and exchange program in this six months artist in lab residency program in Switzerland. It was being facilitated by the artists in that program under the Zurich University of Art and supported by the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. So this is the overview of what they do, uh, the artists in that program. So they create a residency program for six months for artists to work with scientists full time. Uh, six, uh, five days a week, um, eight hours a day for six, six months to one year. And they create, at the end of it, they create exhibitions. It could be art science exhibition, it could be a science exhibition, it could be an art exhibition. So the artist has an opportunity to, to, to make visible what they learn or what they got inspired or how they translate their experience from working with artists into a creative work. And also, the artists in that program do publications. So as part of the um, uh, uh, study, like they study uh, each of the artists and scientists residency program, what is the benefit at the end, how the artists got being inspired, how the scientists got inspired by, by having artists in residency. So they will interview us and then create this kind of publication to, to showcase to the educational community, like how these things, will have a positive impact in their education. So meanwhile, they will create forum and uh, to make their ongoing process or at the end of the residency make visible for the public or for the student or for the school or wh whoever interested in art science collaboration to have a direct dialogue with the people experienced in it. And also at the end, they will create documentary for uh, how uh, of each of the collaboration between the artists and the scientists to make it very visible and put it online and share our so-called uh, this invisible knowledge that happens uh, in, in this uh, artist in lab residency program. So then they let it grow online or in the publication, people can do a lot of uh, referral and referencing about this project. And we hope that it can influence a lot of different people, in, no matter they are scientists or artists, using different kind of, uh, the sim similar kind of strategy to exchange. So my version of my participation in the program is very straightforward, as I mentioned before is my, my objective was to work together and create exchange with the neuroscientists in their lab. I try to learn more about what is mindfulness from their perspective, from the research. But this is where and how we have to face the first challenge to collaborate in this transdisciplinary setting because we have to deal with, we have to face a challenge between artistic method and scientific method. Because artistic method is could be anything. Could be I got inspired and then I create something. Uh, but scientific method is based on facts, observation, and evidence. So when these two methods combine together, there's a huge question, how we can quantify, how we can work together, uh, what is right, what is wrong, and how we can align our perspective. 
but I can show you a little bit um, how I figured that out after the six months, like these this challenges, uh, how we have different languages, uh, professional languages, and different kind of way to work. And so this is by the end of residence, I can share with you how I conclude I so-called my model that I think is work out uh, for a very reciprocating knowledge exchange with scientists, between our scientists and artists. So the I there, there's going to be four major activities. So the first um, activities, uh, you can look at it as a pillar. In each of these activities, you can look at it as a pillar of exchange uh, to support this kind of uh, collaborations. So the first pillar is weekly workshop. The aim is to exchange on our professional practice. So in this workshop, I break it down to two sessions. The first session is the scientist input scientist sessions. I invite the scientists to talk about their present research related to mindfulness. So naturally, they will bring me a lot of interesting research uh, related to mindfulness or about mindfulness. Then I can start to dive into the scientific realm. And following this is to input artistic uh, the artist sessions to have me which is the artist to share my past installation my idea my concept why i got interested and how do i plan and how do i research and my view and more importantly i bring the question is how i use experiential installation as intervention to try to enhance mindfulness practice and bring this to them to try to receive feedback and challenges from them and try to see if they can help me to elaborate and articulate how we can work together. So the second pillar is collaborating a prototype. So you can see the layering is start to step up a little by little, getting closer and closer. Uh, we use collaborating prototype as our case study. So we pick up their scientific prototype uh, as a case study and have the artist to advise on the scientific work. So this is a moment that we try to deal with the challenge because when we have the challenge, we know we can try to find more and more solutions. For instance, they uh, during the whole residency program, they were developing a VR experience that could um, work with mindfulness and um, and then try to take a lot of information from the participant to see if mindfulness can change their heart rate and, and their impulses and the way um, uh, they, they react to this mindfulness training. And I suggested uh, on top of this scientific prototype, uh, I suggested if, if I can create an additional artistic scenario with light. Because in this kind of VR experience, a lot of time that you will see um, uh, a lot of visual cues. And then I asked them, oh, can we, I followed exactly the, the guideline of your visual cue, but I want to use more, more symbolically or more conceptually with lights to create this cue. And this, they say it's fine. So this is a moment that I can learn what is the scientific procedure. And also they start to get interested how artists will interpret this kind of uh, code and, 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 and requirement. And secondly, right, we will pick up the artistic prototype, which is the experiential installation, to have the scientists advise on so that they have something to evaluate on. And then I, in the same time, I can receive their suggestion, their feedback, and comment. So this can only be visible, uh, possible that when I bring this for them to, to ask and then to evaluate. But this only can happen when we start to know each other better and better. And then later, we can try to combine, if we can combine our artistic view and our scientific view into creating these installations. So, and then the next pillar is um, uh, having a lot of meetings with other scientists in the neuroscience lab to learn more about the research. Because in the neuroscience lab, you will see this actually they work in an interdisciplinary setting. It could be an uh, engineer, it could be computational psychologist, it could be a uh, specialist in um, um, brain imaging. So there's a lot of different kind of scientists. So I can try to understand how they use this interdisciplinary setting to work together. And I can try to reflect to my practice, how I want to bring interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary people work together on the same subject and allocating different role and different duty and try to find solution for the subject. So, but this is a moment that allow me to learn more about a, a mathematical view on stress or, uh, uh, or psychological view on stress or computational psychology view on stress and also on mindfulness. And it helped me to get into more and more what science look into this subject. 
And lastly is the, the fourth pillar, which is the one of the more interesting part is to be the control subject uh, in the experiment to fully understand what is their research method and the technology being used. Because at the end, I want to create the installation. So it's sort of like a tools that we could help people. But I understand them do how they design experiment and create a solution and then create be finally become a product or a, 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 a technique, then I can reflect to it in my installation what is the procedure it could be needed. And also I can bring this for them to evaluate the procedure. So now then we jump to the second project that, okay, the, the six month residency finished uh, and then I have a lot of ideas and about, I learned more about uh, mindfulness. Then I would like to talk about it, share with the community to collect feedback, like, like to quantify it, like what I want to know and what is the direction I want to do. So then that's the reason why I created this forum. The, this forum is the second project. Uh, it's an international forum that I co-curated with the Artists in Net program and also with the West Kowloon Cultural Authority District in Hong Kong. So the objective was to discuss art science collaboration with educators, scientists, and students. And, and this is where I have to figure and reflect my experience working with the scientists and how to think and how to consider and how to transform and convey what I learned or got affected from the scientists into my creative process. And then allowing educators to understand there's an interest in the arts community or in the science community to having op opening this door for collaborations and also have the scientists and other students to understanding this, there's a part of the world, a lot of artists and scientists doing similar things. It helped people to anchor this idea and to develop on. So by the end of the um, residency or this forum that I can show you what some of the elements that I explore and we sort of uh, pinpoint a lot of area extended. But as you can see, by the end of this ex uh, experience, it extended even more and more topic. And this is the moment I call a natural knowledge exchange process. Two group of people, they have completely different discipline and different training, but they share the similar goal and similar interest and similar subject. You put them together, uh, creating workshops, creating a prototype together, and experiencing and experimenting together. At the end, they will elaborate something, no matter what, because people, this is human nature. They like to collaborate. They like to help each other. So you can see... Um, uh, how we extend a different view and, 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 and interest. And then by doing that, we become, we can try to find a solution more holistic. So uh, here I just uh, uh, roughly pinpoint field area. So we compare our research method. So what is artistic uh, research method and scientific research method. At the end, I learn about much more about the scientific view of probability or how they work in a transdisciplinary setting. And they even teach me informational theory and the base, ba Bayesian theorem and how can I use that to evaluate my creative process. And these are the things that are very interesting because it's a direct impact on my professional practice and, and, and asking me to evaluate the paradigm that I was being educated in or using. And then can I mix with another paradigm or create a paradigm shift into my creative process? And so this is one of the interesting areas. And the uh, second one uh, is uh, the application. So as I say, can we explore mindfulness as a resources and or using the biofeedback training that they sometimes they research on or they, they will use biofeedback as a tool to help people to, to manage the stress. So can, can, can mindfulness or experiential installation along with mindfulness uh, biofeedback training can integrate together, which I will talk about it later in my installation. How do I use my installation, uh, create new scenario by what I learned from biofeedback. And then the uh, third topic is uh, the experiential installation. As I say, we always focus and surround the subject of how we can create experiential installation together as an artist, as a scientist, collaborations and can mindfulness and use this kind of installation as an enhancement and help people to to use non-drugs therapy and non-drugs interventions so it's also extended to 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 more interesting uh, subject for the scientists to think about can we use aesthetic experience as part of the resources instead of drugs um this kind of subject 
to for them to think. So by the end of it, they also think it's a very interesting area to research on. But we don't get into too deep about this. And then we go to the next topic. And then the next topic is uh, the measurement tools. And um, so uh, I was learning more and more about the, 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 the new imaging. And I realized that uh, how, how knowledge is being invented, let's say, uh, 15 years ago, mindfulness considered is pseudoscience. But in 15 years ago, when when um, when new imaging technique uh, start to get more and more introduced, the technology and the machine being introduced, they realize that by scanning people, uh, their brain, and then while they are doing the mindfulness training, that has a therapeutic effect on their brain. It's changing the the way they think and also the way they manage stress. And then so, which means the existing or available scientific tool will very much affect the way that we see knowledge. So if we don't have the tools to quantify knowledge or uh, the, the a subject, then we don't think it's science. So that's why mindfulness is considered pseudoscience. But now we have a machine to test on, to measure on our brain, then we realize that, oh, our meditation has a therapeutic effect. And then we can use evidence to quantify. So for me, it's very interesting, like how knowledge is being created. Because as an artist, knowledge is being created by exploring and, 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 and discussing and learning. But for them, knowledge is knowledge only when you can quantify it and measure it. So it's a very different way to exchange how we reflect and think and found knowledge. And the last one is uh, the learning deep more, more and more about scientific research. Uh, what is introspection in a scientific perspective and interceptions and then how can i use that and render this into my creative strategy or creative process so finally we get into the uh, final installation which is the last stop of my artistic ventures uh, the installation is called to see a world in a grain of sand an experiential installation inspired by mindfulness in its related scientific research it's a very long name but because we want to make it visible, like this is actually not only an art installation, it's being inspired by these collaborations. So I basically render my artistic, my, my, my residency experience and some scientific information I learned from the scientists and implement into my creative process to prepare these installations. So it's a very um, uh, uh, it's interesting, um, influence. They don't influence my artwork directly, but they influence the way that I think. So for instance, I learned from the new, new knowledge about the biofeedback uh, training and that we, we can use electric sensor to see the changes in our body and uh, while we think or relax our muscle or our body or our mind. So this biofeedback therapy or machine can help us to train our thoughts and to manage our body or our emotion better. And Normally, this biofeedback training will have a lot of visual cues or audio cues and triggering um, the, the participant to engage into their, their physiology and their mind. And, um, and I found this interesting because this computer that basically a lot of uh, design imagery and, and audio imagery, uh, audio, audio cue, then I, I think, can I use my artistic installation to, to make it uh, respecting the rule and the guideline of this biofeedback training, but use it more conceptual or more artistic. Oops, I jump one slide more. And um, so in some of the elements in the installation, I attempt to use some of this idea, uh, which is to create very, very slow visual and audio rhythm, which I learned exactly from, from the biofeedback and then try to translate and transform into artistic scenery, light scenery and sound scenery, soundscape, and to make the visitor to engage their mindful observations uh, in, this, in this experiential installation, they experience alone. And the purpose was to allow them to reflect, to have a reflective moment, to focus on the present moment about the surrounding and also the changes in their body. So which is trying to align the principle of mindfulness. So uh, the next one uh, is a video that I would like to share with you. It's a segment of the installations. Uh, it's going to be seven minutes. It's a little bit long, but I hope you can look at it or feel the music or whatever happened in, in, in front of you as a mindfulness session. Try to, try to just 
feel it and try to describe it yourself um, uh, without any judgment so you can look at it as a mindfulness session. Um, unfortunately, you cannot be in the installation and you can see in, in, in the screen, but this is um, uh, a, a taste that you can taste the tone of the installation and then we will come back to our end of today's discussions. So now we play the video. Thank you.
Now we come back to our, so we finished this video. So, um, oops. So to be sure the installation over an audio, visual and tactile experience uh, for the visitor to stroll there just to observe the aesthetic, aesthetic surrounding. So I use light, sound, music and touch as intervention to grab the attention of the visitor and to let them to focus on the present moment. So the intention is to align my aim to offer this visual, uh, to offer the visitor an experience to, to grab their mindful ability so that they can observe their own surrounding emotion. So in the video, because we see in the video and it's, it's, it's very long, a lot of time that we will look at the video and say, oh, it's very long, very dark, I don't see anything, it's very boring. So this is actually exactly the moment that we can look into it, like why we feel like so anxiously need to have an answer about what we are seeing. Because our mind, our human minds in, in this contemporary state is always trying to try to try to get information from what we see. But a lot of time that when we have epiphany or when we have an understanding about ourselves, it's happened in a very quiet, very um uh, 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 serene scale or moment. And a lot of time is uh, we 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 in a place or in a moment that we are not doing anything, and suddenly there's a click of understanding of ourselves. It's a click understanding of our mind and our body. So this is what what I try to create a so-called contemplative space, just using aesthetic experience, just to let people to do nothing there, because when we do nothing is actually is doing everything in your brain because you have to justify what you are but if i feed you a lot of information about something very solid like mindfulness is about this you're receiving it you're receiving information but you're not considering it you're not reflecting it you're not triggering your introspections but in a moment that we are not doing anything this is a moment that happens our introspection is more more prominent more more visible we start to talk about ourselves, uh, reflect ourselves, what we are, why we think the way we think. And this is why I use this conceptual sense to put in the installation. And that's why I made the video so long, so to, to make you just to, to, to feel the struggle, why I need to know what is going on. A lot of time we don't need to know what is going on. A lot of time we just have to reflect why we feel the way we feel. So this is, also what mindfulness can teach us. So now we come back to the, our, the end of our, um, our topic, sharing with you guys that like exploring us in science collaborations. As I mentioned before, this is an overview of my project that I bring into Yale and then set up a lot of um, uh, discussions uh, with the scientists there, with the expert there, with the educator there, even with the student there, through field research or meeting the expert or a seminar or um, a lecturer, I participate a lot of lectures in Yale and uh, do a lot of informing interview with the expert. So this is how I 
I see I can create knowledge exchange with the Yale University by presenting this. And what do you think about it? Because what I do is not exist in a um, uh, regular educational paradigm. Uh, it's not that I sit in a class, I learn something, and I go and then I, I realize it. It's more like I have this question that about art science collaboration, about mindfulness. I'm interested in what is the essential factor to facilitate this kind of collaboration. What is the essential factor to create an installation that uh, can enhance mindfulness? By only getting the answer is to have feedback directly with the people they, they are working similar subject. So this is how I, I see it's possible that uh, working with the Yale expert. So now we come back to the, our, the end of it. So you can think about this presentation, you can reflect like what are the opportunities that you can see or explore in the future? Like, can it open new door for you in your discipline to work in a transdisciplinary setting using what I present to you, this kind of method or strategy? Uh, what is the challenge ahead if you are already working in this kind of setting? Uh, if you can share with you your curatorial, educational, or management strategy and to win over these challenges, or if you one day can curate a art science collaboration or cross disciplinary program and to facilitate art science collaboration. So what would you do? Or any thought that you would like to share with us is feel free to share. So now I pass to Emily. And so thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Tiong. Uh, it was so great to hear that presentation. It's clearly so well thought out and well researched. Um, so we do have about 20 minutes for question and answers. We have a few questions that people submitted during your talk. Um, but you alluded to this in your closing a little bit before we get to that. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how your experience during your fellowship here in New Haven and at Yale will, will influence your future work. Yeah. Um, so as as I mentioned before, like when I at the very beginning when I come to uh, apply the fellowship uh, before I apply the fellowship in Yale, actually I try to go to different university, try to try to launch the same project, and then try to get feedback from the scientists and try to set up installation and collaboration. So for me, uh, is is it? I, I try to have uh, a lot of dialogue. I don't know what this dialogue leads me to, but I try to have a lot of dialogue as much as possible with the people that are also working in a similar setting. Then I can try to reflect it. But as I mentioned before, like uh, uh, when I was in Yale, so I do a lot of uh, I participate participate a lot of seminars or workshops in Yale, and also in the same time I like to do seminar with them to collect feedback. And uh, I target uh, mostly on educator or scientists, they have this transdisciplinary interest. And uh, so for instance, I go to some of the professors, they have workshop and, 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 and class put scientists or in, in one of the art classes and to let the student try to think in a different way. And also some of the classes that bring the artists to go to the new science lab and then just to learn how scientists talk about philosophy. Just try to shake the art student a little bit. So by doing that, I, I, I learned a lot of the so-called educational strategy, like how the educator in Yale like put this kind of concept into their, their teaching. And the aim is very simple and very straightforward is to inspire the student to try to think out of the box and inspire the student to collaborate. And this, after these six months, it, it, it made me to think of new project. Uh, for instance, like I would like to create educational workshop with the student in Hong Kong, in Europe, um, creating workshop, like putting scientists and, and, and artists together or using these installations as a starting point with our art student, and then we invite scientists to talk about it. So by learning a lot of educational programming and methods from the uh, the year expert and educator, it gives me a lot of um, uh, uh, insights, like how they plan it all out, and I can reflect to my project. And if I want to uh, proceed and create this kind of project, I can I can learn from these ex references and example. Great, thanks. Um, it's very interesting that, that you're uh, interested in branching out to more education. You said working potentially with art students or science students in Hong Kong and Europe. Um, one of our questions is about the future of what your project could mean for the intersection of arts and, and health. Um, 
So one question someone asked was, do you, what if a physician one day prescribes, you know, an hour, two hours of cultural experience as a way to improve your health? Um, do you foresee something like these cultural experiences, light installations, other art experiences becoming a, a way that people are going to improve their health in yes. the future? Yes, in the future, um, this 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 kind of uh, approach will become more and more um, uh, familiar in, in in the educational community, or in the, no matter in the educational community or in the independent level as an artist or scientist. But uh, eight years ago, uh, from my experience, eight years ago, ten years ago is not as common. But with the STEAM education and STEM education, it become more common. For instance, my project on mindfulness. Eight years ago, when I talk about when I when I myself learned about mindfulness, I found out, oh, okay, is it some kind of spiritual thing? Then more than I learned it, oh, it's not about my, it's it's not only about spiritual. It's really something that you can look at it in a very scientific way or psychological way. And uh, then I start to research in uh, 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 bring this subject to bring to Zurich. And at the beginning, like the art school will look at it as like, oh, are you going to research on some kind of like yoga practice or some kind of new age things and you know ask school they don't like these kind of things um but then more than research more than i know then they also realize that in the scientific world they are researching that the mind and actually can be investigated and as i mentioned before like 15 years ago we don't have a lot of technology in the science field to scan the brain and now we have and then now when they scan the brain they realize that spiritual thoughts and meditations can have a therapeutic effect and then once they have the tools they realize that it can quantify and then they realize that oh spirituality is not that bad after all and also there's from different door and different windows the long drug intervention it become more and more popular in the scientific view or in the psychiatric field like using non drugs intervention to help people in need you, you're not necessarily need, need to take drugs or to help your mental health issue, or you might not even have any mental health issue. You just maybe, I'm too busy at work. I want to mental my, uh, manage my stress um, better. So by introducing a lot of long drugs intervention, it become more and more popular topic for researcher to look into. So you can see there's arts therapy, there's uh, experiential therapy, and different kind of long drugs therapy become uh, very useful for cognitive therapy. And where, where arts become very useful, and when I was still doing this project or, or researching in Zurich, it's not as common that people would put arts and science together. But when I come to Yale um, this year, 2020, and then when I approach Yale and I realize that in the uh, stress research center in Yale, they already have alternative approach that, that they research on mindfulness um, with neuroscience. And then they also believe art has a therapeutic effect and can have a function and, and can help and, and why not? And so I bring this subject to them and ask them to give me a uh, review or feedback or information. And I realized that actually in the state, it's much more open for that. And also in Europe, it's almost also more open and open up about understanding mindfulness. And also there's one of the projects that I got very um, in, inspired, which is the Yale, in the Yale Arts Gallery. They have a mindfulness workshops um, in, in, the, in the Yale Arts Gallery. Uh, they invite the Stress uh, Research Center, uh, one of the instructor, uh, Anderton, to come to do a mindfulness sessions in Yale Arts Gallery uh, with one of the selected artwork by the Yale Arts Gallery. So anyone can join these sessions for about one and a half hours. And so the instructor will introduce what is mindfulness and, and uh, people can practice about a little bit about mindfulness in this session. But in the same time, we focus on one of the artwork and try to use the mindfulness technique to look at the artwork and look at ourselves. And what I find interesting is this kind of strategy, no matter I, you can call it educational strategy or educational strategy or, 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 or creative strategy. It, you have you create a win-win effect because in this one and a half hour you open for the public these 25 or 20 participants at the end of it they learn about more yale arts gallery they learn about more the artwork they learn about mindfulness so at the end you just you have one and a half hour have a lot of effects like people you anchor the idea for them to to try to come across to it 
if they're interested, they will go back home and try to learn and, and find out more about mindfulness or about the artwork. So for me, this is a very good example for the educational community or for the scientific community or even for the curatorial community to, to create this kind of cross-disciplinary or cross-over collaborations. But by the end, it's, it's faci facilitate both ends, no matter it's uh, audience building or knowledge building or help the public to anchor some new idea and then let them to research on. So I can see in the future, it, 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 if we have more support from, 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 from the institutional level or from the cultural policy level or, or from everyone, then I can see this kind of collaboration will be more possible. And at the end, for me, for my project, or for what I'm interested in is, is uh, experiential installation. Could it be one day be a uh, assisting tools for um, non-drugs uh, non-pharmaceutical non intervention to help people to 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 reach peace and reduce stress? And but at the end, what interests me is uh, if I can get more scientists to work together, or if I can work with them, or work in a collaborative setting. And then one day we can really create this. Uh, finalized or quantifiable research paper. So do you answer your questions? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, so we've actually been getting a few questions about your installation that you created that we watched the, the seven minute video of. Um, people are asking if you can talk a bit about how you created the visuals and and one question in particular is, were the images shown in your installation a, pro a product of the collaboration with the scientists? Uh, for example, did you use EEG or fMRI to test the effects of these images? Yes. Uh, well, we have a huge question. Uh, uh, a short answer is no. Um, but how we can, uh, but we explore this. This, this, this actually uh, is a very good question. It's very, at the very beginning of our collaborations, um, uh, one of the neuroscientists, um, he is a physicist. Uh, he's a physicist, uh, say, uh, in our meeting, in our exchange workshop, he said, this is impossible. This, the, your, your, your experiential installation can create any, um, uh, quantifiable research for information for, 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 for our research paper or any research because simply when we use fMRI or other, other uh, uh, imagery uh, technique, the problem is if you experience one of those experiments, you need to be extremely calm and extremely simplified setting. It's not simple, it's, it's very complicated, but they only can uh, detect the, the, the test normally are something very simple because the brain has too many information. If we are doing too many things, which is like we try to think, we try to try to look, we try to listen, we try to move, the device will collect too many, too much information. It's impossible for the computer or for the scientist to interpret it. So that's, that's the reason why they think it's impossible to quantify if, if this kind of uh, experiential installation will have any therapeutic effect. But in the same time that we have a psychiatrist uh, in the in our workshops, like talk about it, like no, I think it's possible. It's just not with the uh, brain brain scan because yes, brain scan is just uh, it's too complicated because our technology are not able to handle so much, so many information in such short time. Um, it's too many. But we can try to evaluate if this kind of experience uh, using intervention study. Uh, let's say they, they uh, long time ago, they, they, before they think we, we introduced yoga practice or mindfulness practice for the patients or the participants, that this kind of practice will help you to, to reduce your stress. And they use intervention study. So by the end of, by the end of it, like after, after a period of time that you've been practicing this, and then you, you ask the participant uh, a lot of different questions to, to see if they have any behavioral change, like how they manage their, their stress differently. Then we can use this kind of, they can, the scientists can use this kind of intervention study to see this kind of installation or using art, would there be any, any, any therapeutic effect or enhancement for, 
for for the um for the uh for 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 the mindfulness practice. So by the end, but we still try to get some scientists to comment on it. So in the installation, that we invite a lot of scientists or doctor or different kind of people come over the installations, and then just to ask them to give comment. A lot of them give a lot of positive comment. They say yes, we cannot quantify it, but we can see a very straightforward effect. People just sit there. People feel uh, people feel more engaged to their personal time, introspection time, or they more engaged to into their thoughts. And a lot of them come to me or will leave comment. They say they feel much calmer. Uh, they feel much. They're they're feeling feeling uplift. Um, so I'm not a scientist. I'm not. Uh, I don't have the. I don't have the uh, credibility to to justify this kind of comment. But these are the comment, and uh, but this is the so-called the impact in artwork created for them. But what I am interested in is like if we can continue working with this, like this can only work and only can can become a scientific uh, research become possible. It really have the scientists to get involved and really set up. Uh, experiment and 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 collaboration in much longer period of time. So uh, that's one part. The second part, you say you asked about the imagery, right? The imagery. Yes, yeah. people are interested in how you created the visuals, and um, yeah. if you could also uh, tell people your website so that they're able to go to the website and see more yes. of your work. Yes. Uh, yes. You can go to uh, the streaming is a little bit uh, pixelated uh, because of the timing. So I would suggest you guys to go to my website, uh, dot uh, We will share this by the end of it, uh, wangchiyong.com, and you can uh, and slash to see a world. Then you will see the images and the video. But how do I come into a creative process? And uh, I give you a glimpse of how do I break it down. The experience is about 25 minutes. So um, when I work with my composer and I work with my imagery or the visual visual environment, I want to give a sense of the uh, visitor have this moment of contemplation. So I research what is contemplative space for a long time. So I take references from church, from, from temple, from park, from people, they feel more when they feel more contemplative, or when do they want to have a moment of themselves? So I combine different kind of experience, different kind of design into my creative strategy. So that's why you see this design is sort of like a circular feeling that you kind of walk into a wound surrounded. And then I use um, uh, a lot of um, natural material uh, like twigs, uh, branches, and uh, metal, rusty metal, to help people to try to engage the, the very nature part of our human experience. And also, I let them to walk on sand. So when you engage in this kind of um, organic material, for me, I hypothesize when human work on naturalistic material, they start to engage to their um, to their awareness first, this, that's for sure. And then if they're alone, and then they will start to engage more about where are they, what they are, what they're doing. And because it's purely aesthetic and conceptual, they will start to juggle. They try to try to figure what it is because it's non-verbal. They try to figure what it is. A lot of time they don't figure, they just like feel it. It's like you go to a musical performance, like orchestra, you, you don't try to question what is this about? Like what is music about? You just enjoy it. But in the course of enjoying the music or in the course of enjoying the environment or bathing in this situation, you go to a beach or go to a musical performance, you start to connect to your physiology. That's what I believe and what I hypothesize. And then this is how I try to make people to bathe into this me introspection moment. And in dark places, which I learned from working and studying and designing theater as a theater lighting designer. When, 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 when an aesthetic environment is very dark, very dim, not obscure, but dim, people start to be more timid in a way, but certainly open up for themselves because they have a personal moment to negotiate with themselves, with their feeling. Then this is like, 
some kind of creative strategies that I, I call that I put into my creative process and design this, like how do I get engaged? So you see, I combine what I learned from theater, installations or architecture, combine all together or landscape design all together into creating this. And the imagery I bring, it, um, you can look at it as in, in, in a setting of four segments. There's four segments of this, this uh, experience you engage. Um, each of them is is ended with the the dawn and then or, or begin with the dawn and then come to the next segment and I break into the four major uh, sentiment the happiness uh, uh, one is joy one is um, uh, um, grief one is um, a grief or poignant feelings uh, one is aesthetic uh, one is uh, just contemplations. So I break into this and 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 I try to work out in different imagery, and uh, some part of it you will see uh, one segment is just wave. You will you bathe in wave, different kind of wave, and then uh, you hear the sounds of the whale uh, diving in deep sea, and and this another segment uh, which is you, the segment that you see uh, which is in this installation is you see it's very it's not from very dim but it start to bloom. But the whole segment is very ambiguous. Like, what is this? What I'm seeing? And also, when you're in the actual installation, you are surrounded by at least a, like several thousand of tricks that we tie the tricks on the brand or on the structure, and then use the light to eliminate them. So it creates this kind of ambiguous feeling, like how the space is being created and being recreated by light. And people are not trying to justify what it is or the technicality. They just enjoy because it's it's a very private moment. So this 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 second segment like gives people like this kind of momentum that 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 they come to the end. You will see like this ambiguous movement of maybe fish or maybe a a, a plant blossom or or, or 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 different kind of element moving. So I kind of create a sense of lightness, but also and then. And it end with the dawn, and then it come with another segment. It's a church, uh, but you don't see a church. You just see uh, it's very conceptual light change, and you hear people walk inside church, but without any um, uh, religious music. Uh, I believe that a lot of people, or including me, I don't have a religious background, but a lot of time when they want to seek for a moment of contemplation, sometimes they will go to church, they will go to temple. Or even if you're not religious, when you enter a church, you will have this, have this passively engagement with the environment that you feel more solid and more, more, more aware of your surrounding. And this is the, 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 the effect I would like to achieve, the effect is not about the surrounding, I think it's in you, how you're gonna feel. So I use this um, visual, visual uh, uh, way to try to put you to engage into this moment. So this is how I come into create different imagery or different scenarios. So, so it's not so much about what image I want you to see because it's extremely ambiguous. You even, there's even ambiguously we see an elephant in one of the scenes. But uh, what I want to do is to make you to feel you are not doing anything. You just be there and just to have a moment of your self being alone and then try to let your thoughts sink and reflect to it. So that's how I, my, my creative process. And meanwhile, I keep on reflecting what I learned from the scientists. Can I use that? Can I reflect to it? And, and can, what kind of question I should ask myself to keep on producing? Thanks, Xiong. Um, this has been a really great presentation and discussion. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time, so we're going to have to end here. But um, I just want to thank you again for giving such a great presentation. Uh, thanks to Festival of Arts and Ideas for hosting and HKETO NY and the Yale School of Drama for being our partners for this fellowship. Um, Xiong, do you have any last words before we hand it off to Missy for the closing? Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, the festival. Thank you, Yeah China. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you, my previous collaborator from from Switzerland, from Belgium, from now with Yale. And uh, I hope um, um, this is the beginning of um, 
what your everyone journey if you don't know about mindfulness you can look into it if you know about mindfulness you can look into how mindfulness can combine art and how science can combine mindfulness and art and i hope it can inspire people to collaborate and bring dialogue and conversation closer together so thank you very much thanks Jan. missy thanks emily thanks to young for this thought-provoking seminar. Thank you for, to Yale China for this partnership. And thanks to all of you who tuned in to watch the next uh, 2020 HKETO NY Arts Activator event featuring filmmaker Jeremy Hong is uh, June 11th at 8 30 a.m. Eastern time. We hope you might come back to join us for that uh, and to check out the festival's website, www.artidea.org, to learn more about other festival events that are happening through June 30th. Um, we also hope that you might consider taking our economic impact survey. This anonymous survey allows us to understand who we are reaching uh, the impact of our festival on the local Connecticut economy and the economies of the areas in which our audience is virtually viewing these events. Uh, the information we connect we collect is analyzed by social scientists at Quinnipiac University and is used in aggregate to tell our story and to help us make decisions uh, now and in the future. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you again.